In study after study, money is often cited as one of the top conflict points in a marriage. Finances can be an emotional topic for couples, especially when money is tight. So it pays to get in the habit of discussing it on a regular basis, even if you keep separate finances. At stcumoney.org, find six tips for making the conversation easier. Spokane listens when business talks. Welcome to Business Talks, the region's only local business talk show with your host, Ryan McNeese. Business Talks is brought to you by our friends at STCU and Well-Dressed Walrus. Now, let's get down to business with Business Talks. Welcome to Business Talks. I'm Ryan McNeese, and we're here in the studio with Tom Hudson, the voice of the Zags. Thank you for being here. Ryan, great to be here. I I'm excited to start talking about basketball again. I, I appreciate it. <laughs> well, there's plenty probably to talk about uh, with the Zags, but mm-hmm. let's jump back a little bit in your history and, and figure out what brought you to this point in your career. You know, it was the, the funniest thing. I, I was in a situation, my first job, I worked in Grand Junction, Colorado. Uh, I'm from Texas, grew up in Texas, had every intention of moving back to Texas. I applied for a job up here. Uh, I actually forgot. I got a call about two months later, and I forgot who it was that I had uh, applied with. Right. I got a call, and the news director said, hey, you know, you're interested in a job. And I thought to myself, so, you know, I've never been to the Northwest. It's like I'm going to go up there for two years, and I'm going to go home. And, and here I am it. 20 I'm years later. Back. Yeah, it's like, yeah. I've never seen it. I just, you know, it's an adventure. It's going to be fun. And then 20 years later, 21 years later, I'm here and settled in. And uh, it's been great, you know. And then obviously with, uh, with the Gonzaga thing, you know, I started back in uh, what's 2002 was my first year. So we're moving okay. into 16 years 16 now. So, years yeah, it's been, uh, it's, it's been a pretty, uh, pretty amazing well, ride. Well, and, and that particular 16-year run mm-hmm. is obviously extremely memorable and noteworthy. It's been fantastic. And, you know, I tell people all the time, too, with my background in TV, you know, I've seen every single game during this run, which has been, uh, you know, remarkable. I've been so fortunate. And I think that's part of what ended up keeping me here originally right. before I found out that I really loved this area was you know the sports were so good and there was so much success mm-hmm. and, and there were some great stories to tell and then uh, you know getting on with Gonzaga and, and having the opportunity to, to do the radio uh, you know such great people and it's a great school uh, there are a lot of things you can really kind of rally behind oh, and, and really enjoy and uh, you know Coach Few has been fantastic everybody in the entire athletics department so it's uh, it's, it's been a great ride. Well it's been fun to rally behind him as, as a community in general I'm a Zag myself mm-hmm. and I actually can throw back to went to a team basketball camp coach few is a, a grad assistant oh, at the wow. time that actually takes us back <laughs> right, unfortunately yes, uh-huh. quite a while. <laughs> but let's even go further back you went to university of denver denver yes. university mm-hmm. in yep. broadcasting mm-hmm. bachelor's in broadcasting ended up kind of cutting your teeth in high school sports i believe in yes. grand junction colorado mm-hmm. if you look back at those days uh, high school sports and where you started out how did that affect you as you move into big time college sports at this point? Well, you know, to to be honest, it was kind of funny because that was you know my first job had originally been in TV, and then mm-hmm. uh, we actually did a we were an ABC affiliate. We had Monday Night Football back then still, okay. so we did a high school and we had a Division two school there, uh, Mesa State. So we did mm-hmm. a half hour mm-hmm. football show leading into Monday Night Football, and there was a guy, uh, his name was Jim Davis, who mm-hmm. called most of the games on the radio. And Jim's still in Grand Junction, and I owe so much to him. He's, he's such a great guy uh, that gave me an opportunity. And you know, he said, you know, we had him on. He was our you know kind of make mm-hmm. picks and we'll talk about the games a little bit he said hey you know you want to come and, and help out you know we'll have you call a game or two here and there and you know so I it went from you know sitting there you know you're sometimes on a telephone because nothing else is working you know <laughs> and trying to find rosters I mean you know, this is yeah. way back before internet yeah. and you know yeah. all the other stuff and so you know you're trying to figure out a what? team would come over from Denver and mm-hmm. you have no idea who any of the kids are and you're trying to piece it together and maybe talking to the parents and say hey who's number 12 you yeah, know yeah. before you're going and, on and when you mentioned time before internet uh, most of our some of our listeners are probably there, yeah, there, there was, there exactly, was a time right? before internet? Yes, yeah, and you talk about dating yourself. Uh, I worked in, in a place where we actually used typewriters before. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, and, yeah. and so, uh, you know, and, and the AP too. wire literally was the wire coming down yeah. uh, on the printer. So, yeah, so it was an interesting start, you know, and then when I moved up here uh, at the time, uh, the affiliations were all different. Mm-hmm. And so, even though that's what I had loved to do was, was calling games, uh, you know, I didn't really have the opportunity. And so, you know, I was not really sure if that was going to present itself again. Right. Uh, and then when the GU thing, you know, came up, uh, you know, and what a what a fantastic opportunity to, you know, to, to jump back in. Up. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, I'm fortunate, obviously, with the background that I had that was, yeah. you know, high school and then uh, junior college World Series is played down in Grand Junction. So I had some some baseball experience there. But uh, it was it was great to be able to get in and, and, and get going. And then from there, uh, the springboard was Krem 2 and sports director mm-hmm. here in Spokane. Mm-hmm. 
And and your story, as as you noted, that you potentially came to Spokane thinking this won't be long term, mm-hmm. and then you end up staying. That actually, interestingly, parallels a lot of the Gonzaga basketball players throughout the history in which you've been calling. Mm-hmm. That a lot of folks I've sat down with, uh, Matt Santangelo, yep. et, et cetera, say a very similar uh, compliment to mm-hmm. Spokane, which is, I wasn't going to stay here. Uh, Foxy, Richard yes. Fox, uh-huh. he says the same thing. Yeah. I wasn't going to stay in Spokane. Mm-hmm. But all of a sudden, four years, uh, that, that real family feel of Spokane, mm-hmm. uh, you know, banding behind the players, and of course you're following the team all mm-hmm. year long, you see that. Spokane ends up being home. I think it's it's really fascinating, and and I think it's been fascinating to see even as the years have kind of gone on. You know, mm-hmm. we're get, like you said. I mean, the, you know, the players. You know, they come into town, and there's you know nothing going on here, and I'm yep. leaving. To then kind of see, you know, and, and as the years have gone on, you see how Spokane I think is growing, and, and, and positive things are happening here. Uh, the only thing for me has been the winter. You know, still yeah. after all these years of, of being out of Texas, Texas so, you know, yeah. if, if I could cut a, a month off a of winter, it'd be great. You know, but I, yeah. I think the guys have seen it, and then I think uh, you know to see what I think is really neat is to see how involved these guys still are mm-hmm. you know when you go back uh to the guys that you know that played with matt the guys yeah, on the 99 really team that, that broke through that are all pretty much in town you know right. I mean, four or five of those guys are still here oh, yeah. uh and and more keep coming back you know derek rivio just moved back to town you know I mike hart is here uh yeah derek mm-hmm. just retired and uh, he moved back and mike hart has moved back he's out of coaching but you know he's uh, he's getting into the business world so okay. you know even these young guys keep uh, jumping in now right. seeing uh, what's going on here so it has been it's been really neat to see and, and neat to see those guys continue to support uh the program and I think too you know you saw it so much the final four you know oh, how many man. of those guys came back and yep. and you know how involved they were with uh, with everything going on well that's where the loyalty really shows I mm-hmm. had an opportunity to, and, and obviously you were there too uh, uh in March down Salt Lake mm-hmm. I was able to go to that game so yep. that was a lot of fun to see the massive support for Gonzaga and this this run was uh, just uh, incredible. What a, what a great run. You know, it was. And, and, you know, and I have been telling people, you know, I mean, the highlight of my professional career without a doubt. I, I mean, it, I mean, what a phenomenal run. And, and it was like 1999 all over again. Right. You know, it felt like right. there was an excitement again. And, and you know, I had an opportunity. Uh, a, the guy that works at Syracuse, who's a great guy, and I, mm-hmm. I've known him over the years, he sent me an email after, uh, you know, after we won and made it to the Final Four. And he said, hey, congratulations. You know, it's, you're going to have the time of your life calling these games. Oh, yeah. He said, hey, but you know, it's going to get really busy really fast. And sure enough, you, you know, a couple hours after, you know, we'd gotten home, I'm getting emails and calls. Hey, can you come on and talk and, and do this? And, and I thought it was really interesting because, you know, the narrative about Gonzaga seemed to change. And that was kind of what I kept saying to people. I said, you know, all we had mm-hmm. heard was this team can't make it. Or this program isn't good enough. Or they're lucky and they play in a small conference and they get in the tournament and they, yeah. they can never the make naysayers. it. Yeah. And then you look at it and you say, okay, so we broke through and we made it to the final four. And instead of people talking about what we haven't done. They sort of talking about what we have done. You know, right. you look at eight uh, Sweet Sixteens yep. in sixteen years. You know, and you look at making the Elite Eight now. You know, three times, and you've done that two of the last three years. And all of a sudden, I think people's perception started to change a little bit. Absolutely. So, so I, I think it was fun to see again the excitement in Spokane, and then people maybe instead of every time that you're answering a question, mm-hmm. it's not trying to defend why we haven't been there or what's going on. It's been like, hey, you know what? Yeah. Did you see like, what this we is, just yeah, did? Yeah. This this is pretty good. Right. Right. Well, I thought last last year I heard an interview with. Uh, uh, Mark Few, and it really resonated with me where he made the comment, similar to what you said, is we were expected to go this far, that that folks were seeing year Mm -hmm. in and year out, which is amazing in and of itself in terms Mm of WCC championships over and over and over and making it deep into the into March Madness. But his con his uh, his comment was, yeah, but people are expecting that we need to go one step further. Mm -hmm. And that was before, of course, they did it. And I was so happy to see uh, just that continual push and perseverance, and they did it. It was phenomenal. It was, and I was excited to see that too, because I think you know the one thing that I get an opportunity to see mm-hmm. a lot of times is you see the behind the scenes stuff. You know, yeah. and you see how much work goes into it, and you see all the preparation, and you know how hard you know everybody works. And mm-hmm. to hear people, you know, it gets a little frustrating to hear people say, "Well, you're no good," or you know, you choke, or you you know, you never right. win the big games, and you do all stuff. And you know, you look back over the history. I mean, Mark Fuse won 81 percent of his games. Right. You know, which and, is and, unheard of. Yeah, and won some big ones. Yeah. You know. And then I think, too, people look at that big picture and say, well, you've been there, you know, this many years in a row and you've never made it to the Final Four. Well, you know, sometimes those teams weren't necessarily expected to make these runs, right? Absolutely. I mean, you're an 11 seed or you're a 12 seed. You're not supposed to make the Final Four. That's right. that's not how it works. Right. The top four seeds are supposed to make well, it. Well, in you know? sports, and people like yourself, you can go back example after example. Kansas in the late 80s, mm-hmm. that, that's why they're the Cinderella team. That's mm-hmm. what makes March Madness 
uh, that's what's so exciting for the fans. Uh, exactly, and, and I think that that's what you know early on captured everyone's imagination about mm-hmm. Gonzaga, and, and you know, uh, you know, and mostly it's funny because mostly it's the it's the big conference people that you know that, oh, that sure. are you know, that you laugh at because yeah. you know, well, hey, you know, I always used to joke when Adam Morrison was uh, on his on his wonderful run, you know, us, you know, him and JJ Redick were battling for the right. scoring championship. Did a lot of interviews back then and be like, well, you guys don't play anybody. And it's safe. Well, it's like, well, first of all, you know, Michigan State, you know, Washington when they were really good, right. uh, you know, Memphis when they were really good. And then it was also, if it's so easy, why aren't other guys doing it? Exactly. You know, there's and, and plenty of other divisions. Yeah, and it's the same thing with, right. with, the, with the program. It's like, if it's so easy to do what Gonzaga has done over these last 20 years, why isn't right. it being repeated? And I think that's what makes the story so unique right. is that they, you know, coming from nowhere and sustaining it for two decades has been has been phenomenal. Well, obviously a GU fan myself, it's phenomenal what they've been able to accomplish. Let's go back and take a look at what type of preparation do you do in terms of this is a busy schedule for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, summers probably have a little more. Uh, freedom in terms of scheduling, but when when the early season starts kicking off, the obligations on on your part really kick in. So, yeah. walk us through what what. Uh, what this means for you professionally and being a part of this egg? Well, it's kind of funny. It's almost for me like a teacher schedule. Uh, you know, once uh, you know <laughs> basketball ends, then I get into baseball, and then you know, sometime yeah. in June, uh, you know, I wrap up for a few months, and then it's actually funny because I, I feel like uh, the Zag Golf Classic, which just happened, right. is kind of the you know the right. tip off to, to when I start to get a little bit busy. Uh, we've got uh, uh, the night with Gonzaga basketball. It's coming up mm-hmm. October third at uh, Anthony's, and then on the seventh is, is craziness in the kennel. So now it kind of starts to, to kick in. So you know, about right now, I start looking. You know, the magazines start coming out. You know, so there's some more you know mm-hmm. articles and stuff kind of going on uh you know with the with my young kids sometimes it's difficult but, you know try to get over to practice as much as you can and, right. and see uh you know what's going on with the team and, and kind of how they're coming along uh, and then as we get into the season you know there's a lot of prep and it's different again we go back mm-hmm. to you know when i first started and not a lot of internet coverage and not a lot of you know great websites from the schools where you know you were scrambling for information and you know and you were actually you know, looking for a sports page from a local newspaper, you know, we'd get into town and, you know, and you go and kind of start looking through that stuff. So it's changed quite a bit that you have access, not to just the information, uh, but also to video, right? You know, where there are times now where you can, you know, you can get on, you can watch a team play. So you're a little more familiar, you know, with, uh, you know, who their personnel are and kind of what they do Mm -hmm. so, so that you're maybe a little more prepared. Um, you know, trying to figure out, make sure that, you know, you know that the guy that's left-handed is left-handed, you know, and uh, I've heard horror stories, and thank goodness it's never happened to me, but, you know, yeah. oh my gosh, this guy's making left-handed shots. Like, well, you're he's like, left-handed. You're so. like, that guy's darn near ambidextrous. <laughs> yeah, exactly, if right? He wasn't left-handed. <laughs> yes, so, exactly. Tom, let's take a short break mm-hmm. and come right back with Tom Hudson, voice of the Zags. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. You're listening to SpokaneTalksOnline.com, Spokane and North Idaho's business and community talk station. If you're like many shoppers, you love to find a deal online. Or you shop online because it's so convenient. And you probably know thieves love to go online too, to try to steal shoppers' credit card information. When you're shopping online, you can start protecting your credit card information by investigating the website you're shopping on. Make sure the online retailer lists a real phone number and a physical address. Read the site's privacy policy and search for reviews and ratings of the retailer. You can read more about safe shopping online at STCU's financial education blog. Go to stcumoney.org. Hi, this is Kurt Stockwell with Well-Dressed Walrus. We are a local website design and development company here in Spokane. What we do is build beautiful, usable websites for local businesses. A website needs to be beautiful. It needs to be usable for your users, your customers, and yourself. Contact us anytime. We'd love to talk with you about your online marketing. To help you be safe, Washington state law requires you to call 811 two full business days before you plan, for example, to dig, drill, plow, pull from, or pound anything into the ground. Be prepared to provide the operator with the correct address, cross street, and the description of your work. You must mark the dig area with white paint. The operator will inform you of the utilities notified of your impending excavation. Wait for all their marks. Be safe and dig with care. Welcome back to Business Talks. I'm Ryan McNeese, and we're here in the studio with Tom Hudson, the voice of the Zags. 
Thank you, Tom, for being here. I know this here. time of year is busy schedule for you with all the new news coming out about Gonzaga and mm-hmm. the upcoming team. Right before we left for break, we were talking about uh, what's really interesting to me is really what what makes someone like yourself and or this type of profession tick? What does mm-hmm. your day look like? I don't think uh, it's probably common knowledge as to how being a broadcaster for mm-hmm. a top 25 team, uh, I'm going to say top two team right, yeah. last, <laughs> last year. Let's just go straight to the sure, top. Right. <laughs> but give us some more insight on once the season kicks off, whether it be home games or and then separately away games, mm-hmm. what does that schedule, what does a day look like for you? Well, you know, for me, it's interesting, you know, we, when we start um, at the beginning of the week, if we want to do that, you know, start on Mondays yeah. and, you know, we do the Coach Few show every Monday afternoon okay. uh, from noon to one, you know, we're in his office. And so, you know, that Monday morning is a little bit hectic kind of trying to you know make sure i've got everything back and kind of together yep um you know we try to do player interviews i'll also try to interview you know somebody maybe you know the uh, radio guy from the opposing team we're going to play that week so you know you're, you're kind of getting your stuff yep. in, in a row and making sure that uh, that that goes pretty good um and then you know f- during the week it's it's really kind of interesting i mean once you get into league it's a pretty you know regular because you're playing every thursday and saturday exactly um, fairly consistent yes it gets very consistent um you know in the preseason and you know the interesting things are mm-hmm. you know the preseason tournaments right you I mean, when you look at them, last year we're in Orlando and you're calling three games in three days, and so it's a lot of quick turnaround, you know, and, and what you're trying to do, you know, for me, it's probably, people ask me a lot, you know, how, how much prep do you put in? Exactly. You know, I would say it's probably, you know, depending how much video you're watching, mm-hmm. if you're watching video, you know, probably six to eight hours uh, a game, you know, really wanting to know. Six to eight uh, hours per game. Per game, yeah, that's that's probably a, about the number, maybe a little more early on when you don't know the teams as well, mm-hmm. um, but uh, yeah, you know, like I said, you know, you're maybe watch a game, and then and, you know, making sure you've got the numbers right and making sure, you know, who's hurt and who isn't. Uh, you know, we uh, most guys do, you know, you've got a chart that, you know, that, that you personalize, you know, and right. so for mine, you know, you've got, you know, f- number, height, weight, you know, yep. obviously the, the guy's name and maybe, you know, how he's playing right now or, you know, or where he's is, he a McDonald's All-American, you know, exactly. whatever that stuff is. So you've got that in front of you, but you for me, yes, facts e- exactly. Um, but I want to make sure that I've got enough of that kind of in my mind so mm-hmm. that I'm not looking down at a piece of paper while, you know, somebody's making a shot, exactly. you know, and so. Well, I love your example about the left-hander. Mm-hmm, or, yeah. Man, this guy's great from the left side. Sure. Man, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And and then, the, you know, the, the part of that too, that's kind of fun is, you know, when you, when you say something and it actually kind of happens. That's actually kind of fun too. Every yeah. so often you get uh, yeah. you get lucky, but but no. So I think that's the biggest thing uh, you know for me is to make sure that I'm prepared. Yeah. A- and one of the interesting things that you know I always tell people that are trying to get in the business that you know that, that'll ask, um, you know, you maybe of all of that preparation time, you might leave eighty or ninety percent of what you actually studied. You know, in your mind. Right, I mean, right. you don't use it because you don't want to force, you know, right. things. But you didn't that, know where you were going to go. Exactly. In the, you had exactly. to have the, the mm-hmm. breadth, if you will, there. Yes. Yeah, that yeah. Makes and and where the game is going, right? Mm-hmm. And and so, you know, I mean, everybody wants to have storylines. and that's I know that's the big thing now. You know, they want storylines on this, this, this. And then they'll force that storyline, you know, Within down your game. throat, regardless of if that's really what's playing out. Hmm. Uh, you know, for me, you know, it's a little bit of, okay, yeah, this guy's supposed to be good, but he's not having a good game. So we're not really going to keep talking about how great he is. I mean, let's talk about, he. yeah, he's usually a really good player, but he's yeah. struggling. Or what is Gonzaga doing hmm. to this guy who's scoring 20 points a game to make him not score 20 points a game that, tonight? That concept actually kind of fascinates me, that uh, that there is kind of a built-in trying to weave a storyline mm-hmm. into it, because I, I think that is a lot of times what the fans are interested in. Mm-hmm. What comes to mind to me is the Olympics. I, I right. think, I mean, that is mm-hmm. the, the epitome of it's about the story. Mm-hmm. The 100-yard uh, sprint might be, you know, nine seconds long mm-hmm. uh, but the rest of the story what's well, absolutely and and i think it's it's interesting too being you know with gonzaga because people get to know our stories relatively quickly mm-hmm. i mean we knew right. that nigel he transferred and that he had done this and he had done yeah. that and, you know and, and we everybody knew about shem and his back mm-hmm. injury and, and the whole deal right. so it's kind of a funny thing of you know trying to tell the stories maybe of some of the kids and the other teams and, and make people understand hey this i know they're eight and 20 but i have to tell you these are the two or three guys that may you know be good enough to right. maybe help them, you know, beat us. And, you know, a lot of people kind of roll their eyes. That's not going to happen. You're like, yeah, well, this is kind of who they are. Or, you know, hey, this kid comes from from this place. And try to make it interesting from that standpoint. But you're also, you know, having to remember that, you know, that it's our school that we're talking about. And, yeah, and yeah. you know, and for me, because I'm around it so much and you're calling every single game, I get a little bit leery of telling Shemek's backstory like, every I, single game because everybody knows. Yes, week? exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, but, you know. but that's interesting because uh, it's very relevant to somebody tuning in for the first time that particular sure. game. And How yes. many? Don't know. Yes, uh, exactly. a lot of loyal Gonzaga fans that might have heard that story ten times, but... 
it, you it's hit, relevant. Ryan, you hit the nail on the head because that's the thing that, you know, yeah. somebody will, I didn't know that or I hadn't heard that. Yeah. And so that's, you know. That keeps um, you being consistent, if yes, you will. Yes, yes. And, yeah. and so you do talk about this stuff a lot. And then, you know, for us, it's great to tell our stories because one of the things that I think has been so fantastic about the Gonzaga story to this point is the type of kids uh, that uh, Coach Few and his staff have recruited mm-hmm. over the years. I mean, they, they bring in really solid kids. And they've got great stories to tell, you know, and then if they'll bring in a kid maybe from, a, you know, a, a background that's a little bit different, it's wonderful how they, you know, they, they prop these kids up and, and really give them an opportunity to be successful mm-hmm. and, and not just in basketball, but in life, right. you know, and I think I, I tell people all the time, you know, I think Jeremy Pargo's story is, is one of the great mm-hmm, Gonzaga sure. stories. I mean, a phenomenal kid who came from inner city Chicago, uh, you know, the education system there wasn't great. Um, he was able to come here. He was able to get his degree turned into an amazing basketball player. He's a fantastic human being. You know, right. he comes back every most, summer most and, and you see him. Yeah. And, and, and I think those are the, the, the cool stories along with, you know, the other guys we talk about that, uh, you know, that come in uh, that maybe come from good schools. You, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, they're, it, the stories are fantastic, I think, on both sides of it. Um, but uh, they've done such a great job of bringing in good people. Well, um, the great I, stories to tell. You know, and to me, as someone in the community, I think that's what is so important. Of course, we like to see wins. Who doesn't? And it's so fun to be excited about uh, March Madness as things get more and more exciting through the end of the season and Gonzaga's there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, you know what stood out to me last year is my son had an opportunity around Christmas time to go to a Gonzaga basketball camp. Mm-hmm. He was nine years old at the time. And I walk away from that because those players were absolutely wonderful to mm-hmm. all age ranges. That means a lot. That means a lot here in Spokane. And despite the fact that they're in the national championship game, that's actually what I, I think means a lot. Well, and and I, I agree. Absolutely. And they're, they're fantastic kids. And, you know, one of the things that Coach Few uh, will tell you very begrudgingly, like himself, <laughs> you know, and you kind of have to pull them because they do a lot of stuff that doesn't get – publicity right you know they'll go to an elementary school and they'll right. talk to kids and they don't invite the media to show up with their cameras and say right. hey look at us we're doing wonderful things they're just you know, doing it uh you know there there are opportunities where you know coach few has brought people in uh that maybe you're facing some adversity you know they get to come into practice and, and mm-hmm. meet the players and the players are all you know fantastic w- with you know the people that, that come in and, and nobody ever hears about it or nobody right. ever or knows it and like you said like with the basketball camps I mean, that's not the first time i've heard that story right uh, but it's not this you know hugely publicized right. thing of, of how wonderful the, the guys making- are with the that a media play right uh you know and i think as circling back to what you said very important uh, earlier is that folks don't realize that just what goes on uh, during those two halves that's not the whole story uh there's so much that goes into making this team I, these guys are it's, full-time students. Yes. Uh, I think people forget that. They don't realize this isn't professional basketball. It no. just looks like it. No, exactly. <laughs> it, it does. And, and it is, uh, I think, when you look at the rigors uh, of the academic part. You know, Coach Fuel mm-hmm. always talks about it. He says, hey, they're competing in the classroom against some of the, the best students in the country. And, I mean, right. Gonzaga is no slouch, no, right? I mean, no, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a tough school. And so, uh, you know, it is. And, and I think there is a balancing act there. And there is, you know, making sure that, uh, you know, they're taking care of their grades and making mm-hmm. sure that that's all done. And like you said, so that's, that's part of the behind the scenes you know you show up to practice at two o'clock and you've got to be ready to practice i mean you're playing it like you said your top two team last year i mean you're playing at a really high level so you've got to be ready for that part of it but then you also have to be you know performing in the classroom so there there is a lot that goes on in a herculean schedule you got Mm -hmm. as you indicated once you get into season tuesday night thursday night or in the early season orlando for three or four days Mm -hmm. and by the way you got a whole slate of classes all week long yes uh so you start your week off you're doing your show with coach few Mm -hmm. you get into that tuesday first game during season you're prepping six hours six to eight hours per game Mm -hmm. Significant yeah. schedule. Yeah, it is, and it's and it's fun. You know, it's enjoyable work. Mm-hmm. I have people tell me, like, you don't know how lucky you are. I say, yes, actually, I do know how lucky I yeah. am. I, I, I've got my dream job. I do. Right. I mean, there, there's no doubt about it. I, I love what I do. Uh, it's a lot of fun. So, you know, a lot of times that six to eight hours is pretty easy. You know, right. and, and you'll get maybe break it up in chunks sometimes. Right. You know, when we're on the road, you know, I'll, I'll hop on the plane, and you've got, you know, a few hours, you know, away from the, uh, right, the right. kids and kind of the, the craziness and able right. to do some of that work there. Um, and then, you know, game days are really interesting because, you know, it's the same thing. You know, the, the players – you're going through walkthroughs and there's a team meal mm-hmm. and um you know and again for us uh, you know we don't travel with an engineer so i kind of serve as you know yeah. as the engineer a little bit you, so you're you wear making a couple sure, different hats yes mm-hmm. you know you're making sure that you know the equipment works you know wherever we are and you know and there's a little bit of stress in that depending on where Absolutely. we are sometimes um and so yeah it, it's it is interesting and there are so you know so you have that day uh, that's you know that's a big prep day and then game day turns you mm-hmm. know a little bit and then we're there you know we have an hour-long pregame show 
you know, so we might get to the game two, two and a half hours, depending on where we are, before the game even starts. Okay, and know? that was and one so, of my questions, is that collaboration mm-hmm. with the rest of your team. Yeah, and so and so we get there early, and you make sure mm-hmm. that everything's set up. And then, you know, and then you're trying to talk to maybe some, you know, assistant coaches that, uh, you mm-hmm. know, that you've gotten over. These are, you know, the sports information uh, directors for the schools. You know, a lot of them, the WCC, have been around for a long time, and you establish some great relationships. You know, you talk to, I try to be as forthcoming with our information with the other radio guys. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, and you talk to them and say, hey, you know, this is what's going on. You know, you're not going to see him tonight because, you know, you hate to see somebody come in because it's happened before where, you you know, you prep and you think this guy's going to be a big part of the game for the other right. team. And then the game starts and the guy's not on the floor. Now, it doesn't happen as much as it used to. You're like, I just did an hour of prep for his story. Yeah, exactly. Where is he? Exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so you try to, to make sure that you talk to people that, that know what's going on. And right. um, like I said, you make relationships, you know, for me, you know, it's been a long time I've been doing it. So, you know, you've met some people and maybe try to talk to them a little bit and, you know, see what's going on, see what's going on at the school. Are they doing, you know, new developments, you know, kind of what's going on so you can share some of that. Uh, and then, yeah, and then when it gets going, that hour before the game, there's, you know, there, there's some pretty decent structure to it. Yeah. Uh, once the game gets going, yeah. um, you know, it's, truly you're just time. going. Yeah. And you're, yeah. you know, a lot of it is just feel and you're kind of flying. And like I said, that for me is if you're prepared, it's it's a lot easier to yeah. go, you know, and that that's the part that goes pretty quick, even though it's the longest part of the broadcast. And then you want know, post game for about forty five minutes to an hour, you know, with post game interviews with the you know the assistant coach and you know yeah. one of the players and you know and, and going over the highlights again and you know maybe looking ahead to the next game a little bit. You know, we'll try to recap what the women have done, you know, right, when right. they're playing on the same nights. And uh, so it's yeah, it's a busy day. I mean, our broadcast day uh, by the time we're you know from the time we walk into the gym, you know, first ones in a lot of times and last ones out a lot of for times. Sure. I mean, you might be six hours, seven hours. That uh, you know that you're in the gym or that you're traveling, you yeah, know, from the hotel there. So um, it's uh, they're busy days. They're exhausting days when you finish because you've put so much into it. Uh, you know, for us, the, I, I think the fun part is that uh, you know I have a, a vested interest. I, I see our guys and I see our coaches. I know how hard they work and I know what they do. Um, so you know, you, you are uh, emotionally invested, maybe more than the national guy that comes in and calls the game and then goes back and yep. you know gets a quick nap and then gets on his plane and goes to the next say, game. Yeah. You know, and so uh, that's one thing I've been asked a couple times. You know, would you ever? consider doing that stuff it's fun for me to have Mm -hmm. an interest it's fun to you know really be invested in you know what the team's doing and what's going on so those are great days now I will say when we get into league you know you really start to know teams right you know by the time we get to Vegas for the league tournament it's like okay hey we're playing Santa Clara for the third time this year okay you know and the the thing that's nice about the WCC there doesn't seem to be a ton of turnover with all of this transfer stuff that's been going on so kids are there for you know three or four years for the most part at least the guys that are playing quite a bit so you you have an idea from from year to year, you know, they're most of their key right. guys. They had a few freshmen, but uh, yeah, the, the prep time goes down as we get yeah, into league play. And that second time around, seeing teams, you, uh, you get a little bit of a breather. Well, as we close out, what can we expect from the Zags this year? You know, I think this early, team's early speculation. I think this team's <laughs> going to be a little bit better. You know, I mean, the coaches obviously not better than what we were last year, oh, but okay. better maybe than what the, okay. the, the, they're saying. No, okay. you, you can't lose the guys we lost with Shemek and yeah, with Nigel, yeah. you know, and then Zach Collins, you know, and Jordan Matthews. I mean, th- those are tough players to lose. I think we're going to be okay the schedule's pretty good um you know with uh, you know we're going to the pk80 uh yep. in portland which is That's honoring exciting. phil knight uh we'll yep. play ohio state first uh you know and then you've got creighton you've got villanova uh san diego state UW. so there'll be some pretty tough games in the early schedule i think what's gonna be interesting to see college sports are so unique compared to pro sports because everybody's gonna say hey they played for the national championship last year well no we didn't really the team that played last year and the team that That's played good. this year are two different teams they had similar names but, on the jersey exactly yeah. you know but the expectation every time you step on the floor the team is going to be playing against the team that Absolutely. played for the national championship Absolutely. last year and, and hopefully this group and i think they will have the maturity to understand that people are coming after you even harder than they have in the past Absolutely. which has been pretty hard because they're, they're truly gunning for you they think they're going to get you well what we can definitely depend on is Spokane's going to be behind the Zags, and we're excited for another season. Thank Absolutely. you so much, Brian, Tom. Thanks so much. I Great appreciate to be here. it. Thank Absolutely. You. Mm-hmm. Thanks so much. Mm-hmm. Business Talks is produced in Spokane, Washington by SpokaneTalksOnline.com, which is solely responsible for its content. Ask a question, recommend a guest, and hear this program again online anytime at SpokaneTalksOnline.com. Business Talks is brought to you by our friends at STCU and Well-Dressed Walrus. Business Talks wishes you good business and a good day. If you're like many shoppers, you love to find a deal online. Or you shop online because it's so convenient. And you probably know thieves love to go online too to try to steal shoppers' credit card information. 
When you're shopping online, you can start protecting your credit card information by investigating the website you're shopping on. Make sure the online retailer lists a real phone number and a physical address. Read the site's privacy policy and search for reviews and ratings of the retailer. You can read more about safe shopping online at STCU's financial education blog. Go to stcumoney.org. Hi, this is Kurt Stockwell with Well-Dressed Walrus. We are a local website design and development company here in Spokane. What we do is build beautiful, usable websites for local businesses. A website needs to be beautiful. It needs to be usable for your users, your customers, and yourself. Contact us anytime. We'd love to talk with you about your online marketing.